from the inside of a raptor's colon. This is the Conjecture and Calamity Podcast. It's the first episode, so we got your hosts, Alex, Vinny, and they're just gonna give you a little bit of taste of some questions, y'all. Have a good fucking time. I'm hosty McGee, and I don't give a shit. Ah. 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 Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> oh, hey, welcome, everybody. This is the uh, first episode of the Conjecture and Calamity podcast. My name is uh, Vinny, and I'm here with my co-host... Alex, hey, what's going on? Hey, yeah, it's Alex. Um, if you guys uh, have heard of us before, you might know us from the Almost Adults podcast. It's a podcast run by our very good friend, uh, Gage, and his um, uh, not-so-good friend, uh, John claude And uh, we were on it a couple times, and we decided, hey, let's, let's, do, let's do one of these ourselves. You know, sounds like, a, sounds like a little fun time. What do you think, Alex? You think it's a fun time? I think it's a fun time. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something. Yeah, something it's like, in between uh, great and miserable, that's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's in that little sweet spot. <laughs> and uh and today, you know, today we're not we're not going to go anything uh do anything crazy for you guys. We're just going to do something casual. Just give you a bit of a taste, you know, like like how, you know, when you were a kid and you went to the supermarket with your mom and you saw those little uh kiosks of just candy that you could put in the bag. It's like, you know, when you were a kid and you would just take one of those and and you know when no one was looking even though there are security cameras everywhere it's just like that except there's no stealing involved it's just uh, a little bit little taste shitty metaphors aside we want yeah. this uh, first episode <laughs> to sort of be a promo to see if you if you if you like what we're what we're doing or the idea that we got uh hopefully we'll be releasing these relatively regularly so it won't be too long after this one, where you'll get a full uh, Conjecture and Calamity podcast episode. Yeah, you'll get a full fucking dingus waiting in your notifications <laughs> box, kids. Not kids. I don't. I don't want. I don't want any penises. <laughs> no kids. In- no dinguses. <laughs> no dinguses for kidsuses. That's 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 the moral of this story. <laughs> so ultimately, okay. uh, what we want to do. Mm-hmm. with this podcast is um for those of you who don't know us personally which is which should be almost everybody yeah. uh, <laughs> Vinny and i both went to college together and mm-hmm. now that we've both graduated we have moved far away from each other and we just sort of want to recapture some of the incredible conversations that we've had over the years be it in-depth, really Mm -hmm. thought-provoking, morality-questioning type of conversations we've had, what we want to do with our lives, where we want to go, what this certain thing means to us, but also the incredibly stupid conversations that we've had. Mm-hmm. Not to offend, not to offend anybody, but uh, the retarded conversations. So I would say retarded conversations. I know it goes into like just really deep, dark, deep web, like you know, just fucking <laughs> green text on like black, black background <laughs> sort of shit that we we're, we're getting into stuff that when you listen to and look at, you don't want to be involved with. You want to get <laughs> as far away from it as possible. So don't ever listen to this with your parents around i swear to god if you want your parents to love you stay away from us when they're around listen to us every other time that all of your free time after that so now that we've scared away enough people exactly um uh, it's not that not that bad we're just gonna try and be funny in a very sick sense of humor yeah, very sick. All like type two diabetes type sick. <laughs> <laughs> so really, that, that's pretty sick. You're isn't you're, it? you're sick, but it's it's your fault. It's your fault. You you brought yourself here. Yeah, we we fucked ourselves up. It has nothing to do <laughs> with our upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, yeah. The basic um, the basic crux around uh, 
the incredible conversations that Alex and I would have when we were in college. Um, we used to little little bit of a primer. We used to live in the same dorm together, not in the same dorm room, but in the same dorm hall. And after that, we lived together for two years in two separate apartments. Um, but when those the way those conversations would first start when we were living in the dorm hall is that we would just sit outside at the concrete table and just talk for like four or five hours on end into the wee wee hours of the morning. And usually those conversations would be based around questions or hypothetical situations. And that is where the conjecture part comes in for the conjecture and calamity. The calamity is, um, well, it's, it's the retarded part I just mentioned. Because we'll we'll put for each each episode we'll put forth a a question could be deep thought provoking or a scenario it could also be very well stupid and insane more often than not it's going to be calamity no matter where it goes it's just going to be a train wreck people are diving off of the train into the water to try and save themselves but their bones smack and you know break when they hit the water and it's just it's chaos tragedy on the news at 11 see the beautiful minutes. the beautiful thing about our I blame you Chris Christie the beautiful <laughs> the beautiful thing about these conversations is they would start with something so small and simplistic mm-hmm. that would ultimately divulge into a completely different conversation and we wanted to recapture that within the podcast so hopefully um, the Initial question, scenario, hypothetical will start somewhere and it will grow into something Mm -hmm. either along the same lines and more in depth Mm -hmm. or just something completely off the wall, take a sharp right turn and have a completely different conversation. And it could also just, you know, branch very naturally. Sorry, I fucking burped. That was really gross. (laughs) So you got to get used to this whole podcast thing, you know, not to just do all the gross human stuff we usually do. We just can't, you know, just shit on on mic in front of all of our our beautiful listeners. I'm doing it right now, but um, it it, it'll it'll start from just a very natural sort of way. I mean, it could even start with a story about something that happened to us on that day, just us talking out of our about our lives and you know what has happened to us and and all that, and just sort of branch out from there it's a it's a it's like a little it's like a little piece of fruit that you plant the seed in the ground and you just throw you know water or soil or whatever you want to see it grow and you know if you tend it the right way it'll grow into something beautiful if if not you 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 got yourself something disgusting disgusting in front of you and that's where we come in that's where we come in we are we are the um we are the disgusting aborted fruit that you guys all planted. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I think the the picture is the picture is painted. Mm-hmm. The frame is on it. Let's mm-hmm. go ahead and let's hang this show motherfucker, it off right? to people. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Let's yeah. hang this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> going off of you know what? <laughs> yeah, let's 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 lynch this bitch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're we're getting dark pretty early guys <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> uh actually you know i'm gonna go off of like what i said and you know started with a story that has happened to us or something of that sort sort of just talking about our lives uh i'll just start with just this very basic question um we spent like 20 minutes trying to set up this fucking thing so i'm just gonna lay a really quick question you don't have to go crazy alex but uh how are you I'm good. You're um, good? Yeah. Okay, so Thanks. that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, <laughs> tune in a couple weeks from now when we drop our first real episode. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, since starting doing this podcast, because spoiler alert, we recorded a lot more before this pilot episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, since doing the podcast... I feel like I've been more creative, which is a good mm-hmm. thing. I feel like what's come from this is really uh, sparking that back in me. I want to be writing scripts. I want to be working on movies and 
getting pre-pro started for stuff that I can actually tangibly be working on. Because before this, I was really stagnant. I was just mm-hmm. going through the motions of life. But now I'm thinking of getting back into it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree with you there because um, just just working on this, you know, it's causing me to branch out in different directions that I haven't before. That's really uh, charging me creatively and getting my creative brain really tapped into and getting me actually working on something regularly. And also just, you know, getting back in like further regular touch with you and also um going you know i visited uh, our, uh, our alma mater uh just this past weekend visited our um our old roommates our old apartment mm-hmm. and um just our, our old good friends and you know it just got me thinking that doing this podcast and doing that just got me thinking you know i don't really want to be in an area where i'm not really where i'm not around people that i'm just have nothing in common with which is just pretty much the entirety of south florida Mm -hmm. so this is motivating me to you know actually move out move across the country and you know make something of myself make make some dreams happen you know what i'm saying i'm going to fucking disneyland nigga you know what i'm saying (laughs) going to fucking disneyland i'm I'm tired of south florida i'm going to disney Well, I'm Disneyland, not Disney World. Right, California. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go to California. But now. I just like the concept of you deciding, <laughs> I'm gonna get out of my small town, and I'm gonna go to one big city just a couple miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just like, fuck that, I'm going out of the country. I'm going to Epcot. I'm gonna go visit, <laughs> go around the world, son. I'm gonna visit China. I'm gonna visit Russia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna visit, visit Norway. I'm gonna go <laughs> visit Norway because that's there for some reason. <laughs> uh, the fucking it, they Norway only, ride on that. <laughs> they only included Norway so that they could have that scary ride with the, uh, the fucking uh, giant, with, uh, uh, the fucking bear snowman. Yeah, the with a, a bumble from uh, <laughs> fucking Rudolph. That that was his name. <laughs> that was his nickname, right? Bumble. Yeah, that, but he wasn't scary. It's Bumble. <laughs> no, he he was he was scary at first, and then his teeth got all knocked out, and it turned him into a pussy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, poor Bumble, man. He was cool. Now he's a fucking cuck. <laughs> Little fucking neutered bitch. <laughs> uh, but going but that's that's you... good. Hold on, that's that's a uh, that's good to hear. I didn't realize that uh, that trip sort of sparked i knew that you w- mm-hmm. were getting back into being creative because mm-hmm. naturally after college we had to adapt to normal life but i uh mm-hmm. it's good that you're thinking about getting out of where you were i i yeah i don't think that that's a bad decision no not at all especially you know i'm, I'm gonna you know take some time maybe until like the beginning of the next school year to uh really bust my ass and save some money up so i can make the big move you know Mm-hmm. With enough change in my Where pocket to sort of, are you thinking LA? Uh, I am. I that that that's the that's it. I'm I'm gonna do that because I was talking wow. to Andrew. He's gonna move, uh, try and move out there with Annie at the end of the summer. And he was talking to Keith. Keith wants to move out there too. So we're you know talking to Andrew. We figured you know we'll all look into maybe a duplex or something out there. Something with with decent rent. People mm-hmm. say that uh, LA's got pretty crazy rent. Like uh. <laughs> like a thousand bucks a month for an apartment per person yeah. but uh there's there's actually uh we we also we, i know a bunch of people out there already and as well and their rent is actually pr- fairly reasonable i mean a bit pricey for where i am right now but i mean 700 a month that's not that bad that's what you know? i'm paying right now and i'm yeah. in like st louis yeah, and you're in fucking Missouri. You're in the fucking <laughs> middle of Bumble fuck nowhere. We bring them back to Bumble. And <laughs> Yeah, so um we're going to do that and you know uh, more motivating factors is just work. That that's really motivating me because work just gets so hellish at times. It got pretty hellish today. Mm-hmm. But there is a one one bright spot. <laughs> That happened today that had me giggling pretty good, trying not to laugh because I was talking to my coworker and he was being very serious about what he was telling me. Okay. And this is going to lead into our hypothetical. I'm going to set this up for you, Alex. All right. But, um, so, you know, this guy I work with, he's a, 
he's an immigrant. You know, he's from Paraguay. He came here maybe like five, ten years ago. He recently got a citizenship, so he's now a citizen. Woo! Good, good, good on that. Good on, you know, coming to America and living the American dream. But, um, he is a very susceptible kind of guy. He just, he just reads some crazy stuff and just believes it even though it's just completely insane like one time he was just you know telling us just like Hitler died in Argentina you know he died in Argentina it was just like no 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 he, he killed himself they found his his <laughs> corpse in in Germany in his bunk and he's like no that's what they want you to think and it's like okay and you know you know Chavez Chavez was cursed that's why he 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 died of cancer he was cursed and Chavez is the dictator he, oh, he wasn't a really... I guess he was a dictator of, like, Venezuela or something yeah. in South America. Yeah, Rico Chavez. Yeah, Rico... Rico Chavez. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. But um, today, we were talking about, you know, just the news and stuff, because we... Usually when I see him now, I used to work in the houseman capacities as in the same as him before I moved into part-time and office stuff. And we haven't really had um, much of a conversation since then because the only day that we see each other is Saturdays, and that's our most busiest day. We're just focused on like trying to get everything you know together and up and running. And um, we were actually having a conversation today about the news, crazy stuff, just where our country's at right now <laughs> and that crazy things, but also branched into science and astronomy. And the fact that they recently uh, just found a solar system of seven planets that are very similar to Earth. They haven't found that it's had sustainable life yet, but he, 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 he just he knows it to be true that they're exactly like Earth. <laughs> right. And, it it yeah. says that on BuzzFeed. It says that on BuzzFeed, and um, he was floating a pretty interesting theory to me. He said to me, "You know Adam and Eve, right?" I'm like, okay. He also he believes the Bible to be a hundred percent true. I but I think is what he mm -hmm. says is what he thinks, and he was telling me that um, in a different solar system, in a different part of the galaxy, there's this uh, crazy war going on, all pretty much in a world exactly like ours. They were um, gray alien humanoids. Mm -hmm. Like the ones that you see on all those InfoWars websites, um, they were having a massive war on their planet, and their two survivors, who the two lone survivors of that race, using their shape-shifting alien technology, came to this planet before anything was really here, and they were Adam and Eve. And life just sort of branched out like that. So Adam and Eve were actually gray alien humanoids with their alien shape-shifting technology to make them look exactly like humans. <laughs> and, and that, and that's, exactly uh, like humans before humans existed. Before, before humans existed. <laughs> and so, and he, and I was like, you really, where do you, where did, where did you see this stuff? And he was just like, you know, just things I read, History Channel. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's just like it's just like my uncle reads a lot. He was telling telling me this stuff, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I tried floating evolution by him, just sort of those theories, <laughs> trying to just completely take Adam and Eve out of the equation. <laughs> and he was, you know, he wasn't really having it. You couldn't really have like. <laughs> reasonable discussion about this with him and i heard the phone ring i was like oh i gotta go answer that so i just sort of broke away from that <laughs> but um the <that> situation <laughs> <laughs> this is just so fucking ridiculous just fucking <laughs> thinking about it again like god damn <laughs> <laughs> the start of our, the start of our race we're gray alien reptiles <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. Fucking Alex Jones couldn't even think of something better than that. Oh, holy hell. Anyway, Alex, what I want to float by you as the hypothetical is just just give me a theory about where we fucking came from. And it can be just however you fucking think. Just just make something up. Just pull something from the 
from the fucking deepest, darkest corners of your colon and just throw it at us. Where did we come from? Why are we here, Alex? Okay. So, before anything existed, Mm -hmm. there was the Big Bang. Everything exploded outward from an in uh, from an internal point. Mm-hmm. Uh, solar systems were created, galaxies, planets, suns, stars, and then magically there was one little ball of gas and water that was able to hold life, and it exploded into a million pieces Mm. that got sent all over the galaxy or all over multiple galaxies so seven of which landed in this trappist galaxy one of which landed in really quick um, do you think they listen to trap music in the trappist galaxy (laughs) what if that was like the main like thing by it we just we we, i like the idea of like after it we landed on there like after we after we discovered that it can hold life and there's entire civilizations on each of the planets but they're based entirely around trap music i like the idea of like um uh, organisms being born on that planet that mm-hmm. only speak in trap music oh like God. a freaking frog is going like wub 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 like we land on there and we get off the um and we get off the spaceship, and we walk up to the humanoid, and we're just like, we mean no harm. And they go, bra, 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 <laughs> to us, and then they just fucking scurry away. <laughs> and as they scurry away, they go, scoot! <laughs> <laughs> they go, scoot, scoot! <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> millions of pieces fly all over. Seven in this Trappist galaxy. So that, that means that these separate sections can hold life and then there's this one all the all the other pieces like saturn and shit they were already here but then earth just sort of like skirt in place (laughs) (laughs) and then evolution happened and the the planet evolved and all that jazz right but why i bring this up is because the original human life planet that exploded into a million pieces took with it bits of organisms that existed on it right so as we evolved we became who we are now and if we're able to ever visit the trappist galaxy and visit those planets we will see that we are just one of seven separate pieces of a humanoid gundam so we're gonna fall Oh, no. Oh, my God. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So we are just simply the leg of the Megazord. Yeah, (laughs) we're Voltron, nigga. We're Voltron. We're Voltron. We are a big part of one giant lion. One giant lion (laughs) fighting people in the galaxy. Yeah. We're going to find out that our fingers connect perfectly with theirs. And then when, like... The, the inner webbing of our fingers touch their fingers. They just, like, connect. And then we become just two pieces looking for the other pieces. If we're all part of um, one giant Megazord, does that make Zordon God? Sure. I have not watched enough Power Rangers or Voltron or Transformers to know the answer to that question. I need to read the good book. That's... Or the I need to watch the good anime. <laughs> you need to just go on Netflix and just stream all fucking twenty seasons of Power Rangers. Oh, every, fuck. every different like setting. <laughs> oh my god, that's like actually like the um <laughs> that's like how there's so many different sects of Christianity. It's just all branched <laughs> off from one oh like god. the mighty morphin that started that's like Catholicism, right? And it all just branched off from there, broke off from them. It it, it went from <laughs> Mighty Morphin and then fucking uh, Zeo or whatever broke off, and that was a Protestant. It, it, that that was Lutheranism, and then <laughs> off of that broke off of uh, Calvinism, which was Turbo, and, <laughs> and yeah, because Turbo is just the most <laughs> Turbo just hates everything, <laughs> and they just think that we're all destined to go to hell no matter what, and we can't even change that. 
And, um... And you know we're all part of the same piece. Like, we're all one mega Japanese robot thing, but everybody is fighting over which particular one. Exactly. Exactly. And Alpha was Jesus. <laughs> the fucking robot is like, oh my god, sir, don't crucify me. What if you just you just walk over like the over Calvary Hill and you just see a fucking alpha like strung up on a cross there <laughs> from Power Rangers? Our first our first fan who likes to draw, I want you to draw that image for us. Draw us Alpha crucified, Alpha from Power Rangers on the cross. With and then two... all the GoBots are the ones that were like stabbing him with. Weird and he's spear. like, oh no! <laughs> he just fucking <laughs> fuses out and just fucking dies. <laughs> oh my god it's like the fucking like you know those episodes where you know they would uh, cross over from each of the seasons and all the fucking power rangers were like there that's gotta be like the last supper or something <laughs> you know they just all they just all break off pieces of alpha and just like eat him alpha's a dude right i have no idea i, I always thought alpha was like a girl or something but it's... oh shit and you know what i just realized what if all of the religions are based around, like, humans being mecho, like, mechanical humanoids that are able to connect and turn into... Then atheism would be the opposite. Like, the... I don't believe that we're parts of machines. I believe that we are human. We're created from cells. And we're created by an organic life force. And it's like, so... It just ultimately leads back to... You know, it scratch that. Fuck it. No, I think I understand the point that you're making there, and it's fuck atheists, am I right? <laughs> because goddamn, who wouldn't want to live in a universe where we are fucking part of Voltron, people? <laughs> goddamn, we're gonna... If we, if we ever meet up with the other planets, we can fucking rule the galaxy, man. We can fucking combat all the fucking horrible things that are that are just waiting for us, you know, like fucking, um, uh, uh, Lord Zed, Rita Repulsa, you know, all those, all those, uh, crazy guys that live on the moon that are looking over us trying to, trying to get our oil or, or whatever the fuck they were <laughs> after in the original Power that, Rangers. Do you remember that episode of Family Guy where Peter didn't allow cripples into his restaurant anymore so they all I just formed want, a... yeah i just watched that with my brother like a couple weeks ago they just formed up <laughs> crippletron and then just fucking started that was absolutely retarded yeah that was terrible yeah. but that plays into exactly what we're talking about so we're just gonna form up like a bunch of cripples and just take over the galaxy that's that's our destiny is to take over the galaxy. Well, if, you know, if cripples could actually do that, why don't they just you know do that, and we just don't have to have handicap spaces anymore. We don't have to worry <laughs> about you know accidentally parking in them and getting a fucking two hundred dollar parking ticket. Because everybody knows that Family Guy is based off of one hundred percent factual evidence. It's based off of the one true religion, the Voltron religion. <laughs> We're, I'm getting all of this shit mixed up. It's like, at one point, it's Voltron. I, I just like saying Voltron and the fact that we just morph into giant Voltron lions. is the coolest name. Voltron is the coolest name, and the f idea of that is just, like, mechanical lions that form up into a giant fucking monster robot that just s smashes... Voltron was actually in space, right? Like, actually flew through space and, like, yes, did shit? Yes, Voltron did, yeah. My understanding of Voltron comes from fucking Robot Chicken. Like, that's... Same. That's, that's the, yeah. Yeah, that's the only... Because I just remember, oh, yeah, those skits were in space. I guess that must be where Voltron takes place. But it's like, yeah, I'm mixing up fucking Voltron, Gundam, Power Rangers, because all I, all I fucking know out of them are, like, Power Rangers. And I don't want to say Transformers, <laughs> because, you know... Just throw, throw some uh, Pacific Rim in that too. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are these like you know little HP Lovecraft Godzillas living underground inside of us. So when we form up, they're gonna burst <laughs> out of us. They're gonna burst out of the fucking giant like fucking twelve, twelve of them. I don't know how many Earth planets there are. Just come bursting out of this, and the fucking giant Voltron has to just beat the shit out of all of them, and our minds all have to link up or else we're just going to be fucking dead. We're all going to turn into turn into little brain muck. 
Pacific Rim was not a good movie. <laughs> it was pretty shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I and I love me some Guillermo del Toro. That but that movie was just ah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of disappointed that he's so gung ho about Pacific Rim two and not about Hellboy three. Well, I mean, I don't think I think he's only producing Pacific Rim two, and oh, he's okay. very gung ho about Hellboy three. It's just for some reason people don't want it to happen anymore. Which makes me sad. I keep hearing that he says that it's never going to happen. And then Ron Perlman keeps saying, like, oh, it has to happen. It's going to happen. And then GDT is all like, nah, fuck that. Well, GDT, he really wants to do it. He, In fact, you know, a couple months ago, have you been reading about it in the news, like, recently? Yeah, it's just been, like, so back and forth that it's this mythical thing. Hillboy <laughs> 3, whether or not it's actually going to happen. It's the Kraken it's a Loch Ness monster of movies. People are just like, does it exist? And there are two sides of the camp. Ron Perlman is the Alex Jones, and GDT is fucking Bill Maher or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a... <laughs> well, no. Uh, well, GDT, he wanted it to happen. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I don't know which party didn't want it to happen, but it's. I guess it's just not going to happen. I don't know if that it's sucks. like the creator of the comic book or the studio who is just like, no, neither of the first two made enough money, so we, we can't green li- green light a sequel. Right. Which sucks because I would actually I haven't seen Hellboy two yet, so it I, I, was it was actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't great. It was along the same lines as those like Van Helsing Brothers Grimm sort of. This movie's shitty, but it's also a lot of fun and really cool. Yeah. So I I liked it. I mean, I'll Hellboy to... One was very much superior, though. Yeah, I really, I really liked Hellboy One, but I, I still need to see Hellboy Two. I, I love, I love GDT's fucking Spanish language movies. They're fucking, oh my god. I what can't... was that freaking movie? It, it may have been The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I may be getting my weird creature movie, like creatures on the hero side movies, mixed up. But do you remember which one had a bad guy that was sort of like an assassin, but he was just made of sand, and he had like a crank on his chest that he had to turn, or that, he would die? Is that the mummy? No, it was definitely not the mummy. It was like one of those steampunky esque movies. Like, it was either Hellboy or The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, or something like that, but this guy had like dual swords, and he had a mask like um the pyro from Team Fortress, mm-hmm. and he had like a... Uh, a gear like right where his heart should be uh-huh. and he would crank it before he would fight somebody and then i think somebody like sliced him open and he, sand just spilled out well, i don't i don't think that's leave league of extraordinary gentlemen because uh I, I know that that is just pretty much just all classic literary characters right and I don't, I don't remember a classic literary character that had two swords and a fucking crank in his chest that kept him from turning into sand, like <laughs> like, like most of the people in Syria right now. Hey guys, what's up with Syria? Am I right? Where'd you? <laughs> this is the politics portion of the of the show. <laughs> oh shit! What is it? It was Hellboy. It was Hellboy one. He was a fucking Nazi. Oh yeah, the Nazi dude. Yeah. Yeah. I completely. He, so he had the crank in his i'm 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 just gonna fucking go i was gonna rewatch sicario but now i think i'm just gonna go rewatch hellboy because <laughs> <laughs> i was like hmm i just i want to rewatch all of denise villeneuve's movies because you know he's fucking great rewatched enemy the other day fucking incredible film i like, actually oh. just bought it on dvd or on blu-ray today because mm-hmm. i was so excited about watching that again yeah it is oh my god it is just it's so rich too like it could be about so many different things that mm-hmm. you're just oh my god oh god i could write a fucking 12 page paper on that fucking movie and just turn it in and get a fucking a plus from my fucking college professors but i don't do that anymore now i just serve the common man <laughs> and have him scream in my face when things go wrong but yeah enemy's great <laughs> <laughs> Enemy's really great, <laughs> and uh, Hellboy is uh, pretty cool. What for like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? What would you? What would? What would your idea like team be of just like you know fucking classic characters that are just in the public consciousness? 
Like, what would what would be your A team of like literary history? Oh well, fuck. I I really liked that they did the Invisible Man. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I think that they're going to go the wrong direction with it, but I kind of like what Universal is doing with their idea of like a um, monster movie, mm -hmm. like how they're reintroducing the mummy. But I don't think it's going to be like a reboot of the Brendan Fraser mummy. I think it's going no. to be It's gonna like, be Mission Impossible with mummies. Which is which sucks. See that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're doing it in the wrong direction. What they should be doing is sort of like a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, almost B movie esque thing where all of these monsters are mm -hmm. scary and at one point decide to like all attack earth at the same time maybe not as like a force as like as if as if frankenstein and uh fucking wolfman are talking to each other like oh shit we should attack new york city at the same time or whatever but it would be pretty cool if all these movies led to like some penultimate you know it would be a good example like the underworld series yeah i think that they should be doing that with those movies like with what well, like where it's just a vampire and she's a vampire right right but Kate what Beck i'm saying itself? is like very she's action fucking heavy. hot oh my god anyway go <laughs> continue <laughs> very action heavy like killing uh monsters of myth so i think that they could do a really cool uh frankenstein movie a really cool new invisible man movie mm -hmm. but shit yeah that's what, what i was going to say is to go back to your um I think the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen did a really good job with, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and the Invisible Man mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But the only people that I can think of w to add would be, like, Dracula or um, Frankenstein or The Mummy. Like, classic... <laughs> like, classic Universal's movie monsters? Yeah. Uh, for me, I was wondering if, you know, you would just, like, pull characters from just random novels you read. Like, it's just like, okay, so Hamlet is clearly the leader of the group, but he's oh, a very I conflicted leader. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just, just of, like, anybody. It doesn't just have to be, like, you know, action people. It could be, like, from any, like, literary classic or any film classic or anything like well, that. Well, in that Like, you could have case... Hamlet and Daniel Plain... Daniel Plainview's the villain, obviously. He's he's okay. trying to get... He's trying to get a Rax Oil. <laughs> so, so Daniel Plainview is this... Uh evil villain he's like trying to yeah. take all of the oil in the united states and so hamlet calls upon the help of uh huck finn who knows his way around the united states that's the thing mm -hmm. is that hamlet's like oh shit i gotta go over there but i don't know he, he's like i'm from fucking anything. denmark i don't fucking all i know exactly. is snow all i know is snow <laughs> and lars von trier <laughs> movies so he calls on huck finn to, to be the navigator and then we've got um, Alex from A Clockwork Orange. He's going to be there, too. <laughs> he, he's going to be the wild card. Like, you know, yeah. people, don't, people don't know like, what he's going to do. It's just like, it's just like okay, we, gotta, we, we really got to get information out of this guy. Let's let Alex loose on him. He's just like, mm, and he just comes in. He's like, <laughs> he's singing. He's not singing Singing in the Rain because, you know, copyright infringement. Uh, he'll be singing... Um, <laughs> He'll be singing a what? What's a what's a good song that he'll be singing? Oh, he'll be singing the sign by Ace of Base. He'll be like, "I saw the sign and it opened <laughs> up my eyes. I saw the signs." And he's like whacking the dude with his fucking cane. And then we'll get uh, Moby Dick in there, mm -hmm. the whale. Hamlet's from uh, Denmark. He probably loves uh, Ace of Base. They're from, they're from like the same area, right? I think they're Nazis. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're all fucking Nazi Germans. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Wait, um, did you say Moby Dick? Yeah, we got Moby Dick in there. So we have an Al fucking, He's like, just a regular fucking whale there? <laughs> yeah, they've got him, like, in a tank. They have the they have the ship from the Avengers, and Sam Jackson is like, <laughs> I need you motherfuckers <laughs> to go after Daniel Plainview. And so... <laughs> But it's not Sam so Jackson from Hamlet. the Avengers, it's Sam Jackson from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, 
So he's he's just like he's sitting there eating a hamburger. He's just like, mm, it's a tasty burger. And then he's just like, oh shit, the dude's trying to take the oil. <laughs> and he throws the burger at the wall, lets it smack and fall down. And then we're gonna linger on that shot too. We're gonna linger on the shot of the burger hitting the wall and slowly sliding down till it reaches the floor. To finish off this group, we've got <laughs> uh, Pennywise the Clown from It. <laughs> He's gonna scare the shit out of Daniel Plainview. <laughs> then we've got um uh fuck we need a we need a we need a bronze. He's gonna morph guy. into we a giant like a... spider and fucking eat the oil man. <laughs> we need a heavy. We need someone who could do some real damage. Um all of the kids from the Maximum Ride books. The fucking uh, kids with wings. The angel. They'll be in it. The angel series. Yeah, the, the, the angel. Yeah. Wait. So um, are they? Are they the heavy? Like collectively? I think that they're more of like the the sent the uh, sentry. You know, they're they're the army for the force to go after okay. Daniel Plainview. It's like we've got the five guys in the front, and then all of the winged children in the back. You know what I'm saying? So we can have some shots of people dying without losing anybody from the main cast, you know? Oh, okay. That's important. So wait, are the winged so the winged um, people are expendable or not? Right. They are very expendable. All of so them So they're, 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 they're the pawns. They, Even in, the in children. The Even the children. So in the one yeah. shot of when, you know, they converge upon Daniel Plainview's army as they come over the hills, they're leading up the front like they're like overhead. Exactly. As everyone's running there. <clears throat> And so um, wait, so so wait, who's the heavy? So we have the pawns. I got it. We I got have... it. Junie B. Jones. Junie B. Jones is the heavy. Right. Was Junie B. Jones like a fucking child detective or something? No, Junie B. Jones was the little girl in like first grade. Did you I mean that? Th- 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 there's there's plenty of little girls in first grades, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a really popular series. She wore like those purple glasses or whatever. Maybe it was just because I had little sisters and you had a little brother and he wasn't gay. Yeah, it's true. He he liked Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, so the kid from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. He's got the cheese touch and he is going after Daniel Plainview and that's what ultimately does him in. That that's <laughs> he he touches Daniel Plainview and he turn, turns him to cheese. <laughs> Is is that what the cheese touch is? I've never fucking I don't know any of the these fucking kid references. Okay, so <laughs> uh, in the book, uh, there's a slice of cheese on the pavement, on the uh-huh. playground, <clears throat> that's been sitting there for years, and you don't touch the cheese, or you'll get the cheese touch and be ostracized by all of the other children. So he just he walks up to Daniel Plainview and touches him and nobody wants to talk to Daniel Plainview anymore. Exactly, and that's how the film ends. That's how the League uh, of Extraordinary Literary Characters gentlemen okay, so, children go. So so your so your um your literary reboot of the Avengers includes uh <laughs> Samuel Jackson from Pulp Fiction after he mm-hmm. eats his tasty hamburger. Um fucking he goes and Hamlet, Moby Dick. Yeah, he, he he finds Hamlet, and he's just like Hamlet. Him and Hamlet are like you know the big guns. Hamlet's like Captain America, and he's just like we we got to take your Nazi ass out of here. And so they go to England. They get their wild card, Alex, and then they go to America because that's Daniel Plainview's fucking uh, major base of operations. They find Huck Finn, who who's you know the navigator. And for some reason, they also put a whale on the ship for, like, no reason. And they find a murderous clown hiding out in the sewers. And they just say, hey, let's just throw this guy on the crew, too. And then they find a a crew of angel children. (laughs) And then they just go to some fucking... (laughs) And then they just go to (laughs) a fucking random school in, like, let's just say, like, fucking Kansas. And they find... This kid who touched a piece of moldy cheese, and they're just like, "This is this is our this is Weapon X. This guy is gonna fucking end end World War Oil." And so they wage their giant war against Pl- Daniel Plainview. Wait, what does the whale do? 
uh, their original plan was to drop the whale on Daniel Plainview's house, uh-huh. but uh, he wasn't there that day. Oh, okay. He was he was out uh, getting cat food, right? Yeah, for his cat, which is now dead. So now he's even more angry. <laughs> the, the whale killed the cat. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh no, no sniffles. <laughs> What would Daniel Plainview's... Oh, his cat would milkshakes, be milkshakes. Obviously. Milkshakes, uh, Just like... He's like... You drank my milkshake. You drank it up. And the poor cat. He's He slurps up the cat's entrails. Entrails. Well, I don't see how we could have come up with a better first episode. Yeah. I don't know. I think this is... This is... I think this is good enough. <laughs> there's... There's... There's better... We've done better. We we've done better, but this is this is just a pilot. Like I said, guys, this is this is just a taste of what's to come. There there was some there's some pretty awful things in there. Hopefully you guys will <laughs> hopefully you guys will laugh at it. Um but in the future, uh, come next episode, we got some pretty good stuff. We have some guests. We have Alex's good buddy Steve on the podcast regularly. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'll be on next episode, so look out for that. We also have Gage from Almost Adults coming on, and we have uh, more people coming on as well. Uh, hopefully, some friends of ours from college will come on and give you their awful views about things. And we can just, you know, we'll just keep doing these guys. So we hope to see you next time. Don't, uh, don't, don't go. <laughs> Do you have any final words, Alex? Uh, sure. If you're interested, you can follow us on Twitter. We don't have a we don't have a calamity official Twitter yet because we don't know how good this is going to do. But you can follow me at hashtag Keel, and you can follow Vinny at Papa Vin Chin. Uh, Papa, Vin, and Chin are, are all capped. It's not it's not an all caps, but the first cap is Pop. Papa is, you know, you'll you'll just type, type just type in Papa Vin, you'll find me. I don't um, fucking care. Fuck you, kids. So yeah, just uh, <laughs> let us know if you listened and what you thought. If it's terrible, let us know that it's terrible, so we'll stop. But if it's good, let us know that it's good, so we'll probably stop while we're ahead. Yeah, we'll stop while we're ahead. And, yeah. Bye, guys. We love you. That was a big fart. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, God, it smells. (laughs) Okay, goddamn. Thank you for listening to this first episode. We hope you all enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next episode. We'll have Steve on the podcast, and hopefully we'll have new episodes every other Friday on YouTube and iTunes. That's the tentative goal. We'll try to stick to it. Subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes. Alex and I will post links on Twitter. Again, you can find us there at Papa Vincian and at hashtag Keel. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to spin around on the podcast, shoot us a tweet. Again, we hope you enjoyed it. See you next time, guys. Uh, Fuck off.